Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Demo Jam. My name is Greg Paulson. I'm the Director of Application Engineering at Zometry, and we deal with a lot of parts. Uh, we make a lot of parts. We have multiple manufacturing processes, uh, additive, subtractive, molded, uh, you name it. Uh, so I think this was a very appropriate demo jam on how to choose, uh, choosing the right additive manufacturing process. So in the next about 15 minutes or so, I'm going to go through uh, some handy guides that I put together uh, to help you choose the right additive manufacturing process based off your goals and the job that you're working on. So today, we're going to go with a few, start off with some mindset here, getting you set with 3D printing as a paradigm. Uh, we're going to go through some of Zometry's processes, which is a whole lot of them. Uh, and then we're going to go through that guide. So this, the, the core of this is running through some scenarios on this guide that we made for choosing the right 3D printer process. Also, some really great rules of thumb when you think about print resolution. And then we're going to talk about some tools uh, that Zometry has on you know, getting pricey lead times and uh, looking at some other resources from our site. Let's get started thinking about 3D printing as a mental model, this paradigm shift when we are looking at creating a part generatively. That means that I am not cutting from a large material. I am using some sort of method to grow my part, uh, usually thinking from the bottom to the top. So when I look at parts, I immediately start thinking about their cross sections, where there may be overhanging uh, features to them. And something you really have to consider when you think about designing for 3D printing. Uh, also something to notice is that 3D printers, because they are generating that part uh, from a fusion or from a filament or uh, from a binder, um, they're building net shapes. Uh, so the printers are doing their best effort based off the, the printer itself, the materials used, and the, the parameters, the actual conditions of the print to create as close to the CAD as possible. Uh, that also means that printers dictate the tolerance, not the print itself. That could become very important when you talk about uh, choosing the right pathway for your 3D printer part, or at least creating some design considerations uh, within your process to help mitigate that so you can have a more successful part uh, when you make it the first time. The last thing to know is that when you're building something from nothing, when you have features that are growing and have overhangs, oftentimes I need to build some sort of sacrificial structure uh, caught support in 3D printing. And that's something that is very unique to this process. And so something that you may see on some of your prints. Some processes do not require support structures. But again, when you are thinking about the design and your design intent, and even the process you chose, uh, support structures is just very unique for 3D printed processes. So we're jumping into this because you just don't have a lot of time. So this is going to be a very quick slide. And feel free to pause if you want. But I'm talking about seven different additive manufacturing processes today. And we make all of these at Zometry. I have hands-on experience with all of them. And the guide that I put together is based on the conversations that I have on a daily basis when I talk to customers, I look at their project, and I kind of want to understand what their goals are, what type of environment it's in, and that's going to help me choose. Sometimes, and I'll turn on my cool little pointer here, Sometimes it's looking for like smoother surface objects and photopolymers work really well, like that PolyJet 3D printing or even SLA 3D printing on the opposite side here. Other times I may want something that's, you know, more robust and ruggedized. So these powder bed processes like selective laser sintering or HP multi-jet fusion is really good. I can print big with fused deposition modeling. Um, I also can print in production, so small parts in high, uh, high quantities with carbon digital light synthesis. And we can 3D print in metal with direct metal laser sentry. So again, when I come from this, I'm always thinking about looking at a CAD, giving it a spin, and understanding what those strengths and trade-offs are between each process that we offer. But is this overchoice? Is there anxiety? with so many offerings. And by the way, under each one of these offerings, you don't just have like, oh, FDM, now I'm building FDM. You have materials under those, you have other parts, but you know, that's a, that's a whole other story there. Uh, but there are a lot of processes, a lot of materials and combinations that you could choose on your project. Uh, so when I think about this, I, I'm always trying to reduce that anxiety, big time, hopefully. And this is why I made this really handy guide.
So this is our guide for additive manufacturing and platform selection. Uh, this was put together uh, based on some of the most common questions that we look for and the questions that really quickly help down select a process. And this guide here uh, is uh, something that considers all these different additive manufacturing processes and will really also take a look at some specific needs. So when I talk to you about choosing a 3D printed method, I'm usually trying to understand what's your goal. And sometimes I ask that question, uh, like I would say, you know, what do you see in the next uh, six weeks? What do you see in the next six months? What do you see in the next six years? Those could be very different outcomes depending on your goals. Sometimes I may be looking for a project where I'm looking to impress a market. I'm trying to have something that looks beautiful that I could present to uh, my business team and really inspire them and inspire the product and maybe even get some images out there to help drive sales or drive promotions. So when I look at my goal here, it's not necessarily function, it's, it's something about beauty. So like I may be looking for an aesthetic uh, a prototype uh, for this and something that may not need to last forever, forever, but it really does need to make an impact. Um, I can look through this and see that uh, from aesthetic uh, or something more aesthetic, like it probably can't be a grainy or coarse surface. So it's probably not FDM, SLS or MJF. Um, it's not necessarily about small, t uh, small text, but I do want something clear. So when I look through this guide very quickly, I could down select and say, hey, you know what? Uh, if I'm looking for this specific need, I can choose clear SLA or polyjet vero clear, and that's gonna get me right in the right conditions. In this case, like we have these really great materials, like this is a uh, SLA clear view uh, with a additional finish that you could just select in the finish tab and auto quotes, which is called quick clear. And it kind of brings that, that matte uh, clear look up to a semi-gloss uh, with a clear coat there. Uh, and it's a you know, really quick option, but it's something that I could very quickly down select when I start thinking in these, these larger categories here. I'll also say this route is really good for processes that require high tolerances or fit checks. Because you can see here that a lot of these processes tend to be these photopolymers. These uh, photopolymer processes tend to get some of the cr more crisp features that are true to CAD. So this is also why this category is really good when I think about prototyping. Uh, that could be for a pre-fit uh, check before molding, for example, maybe a ceiling check. Uh, so if I have something I need to put a gasket in, a lot of times the natural surface can actually uh, be compatible enough uh, with gasketing to, to function for those for that prototyping need. Um, sometimes I just need something quick, you know, so if I don't have a specific cosmetic or surface uh, smoothness in mind on that prototype side, uh, FDM, SLS, uh, you're talking about two to three business day lead time. So you can also get these parts made and delivered really quick. In fact, I think some of our FDM actually ships within one business day. It's a really powerful tool for prototyping. So let's look at this other uh, end. This other end here is talking about function. So what drives these requirements is not necessarily how it looks, but it's, it's, it's what it is, like what can it do? And a lot of our products that we make tend to be in this end use functional category because we tend to service uh, mostly, you know, industrial consumer product, uh, um, aerospace defense work is what we see a lot coming through uh, Zometry. So, uh, in this scenario here, my next scenario is I'm looking for a functional part. Uh, you know, I'm looking for something that actually needs to perform uh, in, in its environment. So here I am, I'm hanging out with this functional part here. It can't be a metal. So very quickly here, my, my trade off here, if you're metal, you kind of are stuck with a couple categories uh, right now. So, you know, DMLS or binder jet metal, for example, um, non-metals, it's going to take me a different direction here. And now the next thing is, let's talk about another property that may be common, uh, commonly requested. Uh, you know, is this rigid or rubber-like? In this case, uh, the part that I'm looking for is going to be rigid. It's going to be part of the housing. So it's definitely not going to be under this rubber-like category, which again, rubber-like would take me to polyjet or digital light synthesis, some of those elastomers, which have some really high performance. Uh, so now it's about these specific categories. And these are the most common. There's definitely more. We can definitely expand on this. But to kind of fit this down select into a slide and into a demo jam, I thought this would be excellent to talk about. So impact resistance. Is it going to be impact resistant? That's good, but really I need heat deflection. 
Uh, so HDT greater than 150, that down selects me to a couple processes and actually is a couple materials of those processes. In this case, that's where the situation is going to take me here. So if I'm looking for an end use part, you know, rigid, plastic, and uh, high heat deflection, I've already down selected this choice, this gamut of choices I just w went through down to only a couple in, in a very, very quick method. That, that's why I like this tool. I like going through this approach here. Um, other, other categories that we look at, chemical resistance, some of these are much more chemical resistant than others, uh, and even things like sterilization. So people who are making devices for either medical or food, food uh, safe devices, they may need to just stick with that category. There's uh, materials within these categories um, that you can find on Zometry's FQ that are uh, very specific for sterilization and have very specific means for sterilization for each one of those. The last thing to talk about here is that Every platform has a different build size. So in the lower right corner of this guide here, I have build limits. And just a note, FDM is the largest build platform uh, that we offer uh, with, a, with regular usage up to 36 inches uh, to build confidently. Uh, SLA uh, you know, caps out around you know, 24, 29 inches or so. And then a lot of our major, our core processes cap out a little bit over uh, 12 inches. There are exceptions to all these rules, but this is just kind of a rule of thumb guideline. Um, for DLS and DMLS, they tend to work better with smaller parts. DLS's platform is, ten, is typically smaller, about the size of a novel. So the part size that you're, you're working with there is on average about the size of two fingers, where uh, a lot of the other parts that we can build, we can build you much larger in. So sometimes your down select also has to do with the, with the platform size, like the actual size of the part that's being produced and that's also where some trade-offs can come in but again i wanted to show this guide and show how useful it is because of how quickly you can start thinking about all these processes you know seven different processes and just instantly go boom this one and and then you can actually start looking at materials materials data sheets, properties and really uh, understand which uh, which material in that category works best for you detail resolution can become really important uh, for for some of your projects I just want to note that uh, I use the pen analogy here, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, so if you use a Sharpie fine tip for a permanent marker, uh, one of the things that you'll find is that if you're using it on paper, it does have a nice fine line, but it will also bleed a little bit uh, out there. And that's something on these thermal processes like SLS, multi-jet fusion, and DMLS, you'll find a little bit of that fuzziness on the edges uh, when we think about detail resolution. Um, photopolymers, SLA, polyjet, DLS, I think more like a Sharpie pen, where it doesn't have as much bleed, but it, it has a nice, clean, crisp feature set to it. Not quite completely squared edges, but still pretty dang good. And FDM is going to have the most coarse. Uh, I was thinking more of a kind of a drafter redlining pencil here, so like 1.1 millimeter pencil, but also combined kind of with a Tron bike, where it can't overlap itself. And FDM is a uh, really great process because it can build big, but it does sweat the small stuff. So when you look at detail resolution, in fact, you can actually see there's a quarter right here, kind of showing the size here. FDM, it, it tries, but it doesn't quite hit the detail resolution like some of these other processes may. So sometimes that will also be part of your down select process when you're choosing the right additive manufacturing platform. So what can you do with this information? Well, I'm always going to encourage you uh, to quote and buy in Zometry. So we have all these processes, more processes, than any individual shop where you can go select and buy directly online. Uh, we offer competitive pricing, instant pricing, different finishes, you know, installation of inserts, and uh, accoutrements uh, that can really help on your engineering projects. I really do recommend this as a one-stop shop uh, because it's very empowering for you as an engineer and you spend more time focusing on your design and your intent than sourcing. Uh, and again, we have so many processes that we offer, we want to actually teach you about them too. So Zometry's uh, resources, zometry.com forward slash resources, a fantastic route to learn more. We have free design guides you can download of every single one of those processes, including subtracted processes like molding and, and CNC machining right on our website. And last but not least, uh, if you're learning about Zometry or you know about it, but you want to tell someone else, Zometry does have a referral program. Uh, get your own referral link at zometry.com forward slash refer. Uh, you can send that to them. Uh, they'll get $50 to spend towards their prototyping. If they buy, you get $50 back. That's about it for me. So I hope you enjoyed this demo jam. And I hope you learned a little bit more about uh, how to get in that mindset when you're thinking about choosing the right 3D printer process. Thank you so much.